Hello and welcome to To-Do List and today we're looking at Pokemon Sword and Shield and what can be done after you've completed the main story. The first thing I'd like to point out is a nice little touch. During the opening sequence of the game, it will show you Pokemon team that you became champion with. Looks almost like a promotional video that will get pumped around Galar. Now, after you've beaten the league and you end up back in your hometown, if you take a little walk over to Hop's house, you'll find a nice little surprise. If you go up to Leon's room, you'll find a Pokeball left for you containing a Charmander. Only once this becomes a Charizard, this boy will be able to Gigantamax, just like the ex-champions. This makes it much easier to get this Pokemon, otherwise you'd need to go den hunting for it. Also, big tip, make sure you're connected to the internet when you're trying to complete your Pokedex. Trainers may advertise Pokemon in dens that you've not yet encountered or even pokes that aren't even in your version of the game. It's also very useful for increasing the likelihood to find and capture Gigantamax Pokemon, as they have a tendency just to bail out the ball when they get bored whilst capturing them. The story itself isn't over. If you go back to the slumbering weld, weald? Wald? Slum... If you go back to the sleepy place, at the shrine, where you got the rusty sword and shield, the story continues just for one more chapter, where you, Hop and Piers have to go around battling Dynamax Pokemon with all the gym leaders, whilst also chasing after the descendants of royalty, Swordward and Shieldbert, whose ancestors were kings or something. I won't spoil the story, but it's most certainly worth doing, especially if you want to 100% the game and also complete the Pokedex. Like in most games, there's now a battle facility where you can battle NPC trainers and win rewards and BP, which can be exchanged at shops for rare items. It's challenging and fun, and as you rank up, it becomes more challenging. And after a certain amount of wins, you battle Leon again. And if you beat him this time, you get his rare trainer card for your album. So, I would say definitely give this a shot. Especially if you want to sharpen up your team before taking on some online battles as well. When you enter the battle tower and look to the left, you'll find a league member of staff with a type null. After a short conversation, she will give you the type null, and also give you all the type memories for when it evolves into Sil Valley as well. Also, you can keep challenging the league where gym leaders, random trainers, and also trainers you yourself have invited, will work towards the title of champion. So, it's good for some money and EXP, plus you can see some gigantic Pokemon you haven't seen previously, like Milo's Appleton or Flapple. If you descended the side streets of Motorstoke during the game, you would have found a young man who says, come back when you're champion. Cocky little sod. And when you swan on back, this fellow will teach you the strongest steel move to any of your steel Pokemon. Steel Beam. Now it is a special move, so it's not going to be very useful for your physical hitters. Once a day, you will now be able to battle Game Freak Morimoto, who has a strong team of level 65 Pokemon to take on, including a Dynamax Snorlax. And after you beat him for the first time, he will reward you with the Oval Charm which increases the chance of finding Pokemon eggs at the nursery. So, pretty helpful if you're breeding multiple pokes. Now that Piers has retired from being a gym leader, his sister Marnie has now taken over. So, once a day you can now travel to Spike Myth and battle her for some EXP and cash, and also her rare card as well. She also does not Dynamax just like Piers. As a side mission, you can always work on your curry decks as well. If anything, it'll make your Pokemon more friendly towards you, and boost them up with little bits of EXP. Plus, certain Pokemon only level up through friendlier, so keep this in mind when you're making those little curries. But I imagine this is more for you completionists out there, and for those who want all the toys for your Pokemon as well. Thank you very much for watching my Pokemon Sword and Shield video today. If you enjoyed what you saw, please give it a like. I publish new videos as often as I can, and if you want to see more, please subscribe and ring that bell to let you know when new videos are available. Bye for now.